Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Excellencies, distinguished delegate, and ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I wish to thank uh, the organization of this forum for having invited me to speak here today. That is real pleasure and honor. And also, I would like to congratulate with the organization for having uh, uh, making happening this uh, event in the, the most cosmopolitan city of the world, that is Rotterdam. And also, I'm very impressed that for all that's been presented since yesterday from the opening. And uh, I'm also very impressed from the presentation of today. And I would like now to give a message on behalf of the European Commission, what the Commission actually is doing, and which is the contribution to the collaborative geospatial strategies. As the speakers before me has underlined the importance uh, from national and also international point of view to, that we have to work together in a complementary and uh, um, efficiently matter, and also uh, we have seen uh, this morning from the uh, private sector how the importance of the geospatial information. I would like now to point out what uh, the Joint Research Center is doing in, uh, in, this, uh, in this field. Uh, first of all, I would like to, uh, to say you something about what is the Joint Research Center that I think maybe you know about is the European Commission in House Science and Service. And I would like to come back to the combination of science and technology and open policy. This is what actually the GRC is doing in supporting the European strategy also in the field of uh, geospatial information. In particular, my directorate, that is the Institute for Environment and Sustainability, is giving uh, scientific technical support to the EU policies, not only for the protection of the environment, but above all for a more efficient and sustainable management of natural resources. And this not only at European scale, but at global and continental scale. Our main work areas are related to climate change, air quality policies, land resources management, and in this, as I said, not only for Europe, but a global scale, and we have projects in Africa, in Latin America, and then the Asia Pacific Basin. We uh, work very much on forestry resources uh, and climate water resources, and we do monitoring of agricultural resources. And all these, uh, uh, including the digital science and environmental standardization that uh, we have our under major activities. In all this field, we are major users of all geospatial information. I would like to give some, uh, some example of how we use uh, the data, the data that are available. As here, for instance, we have, uh, in the case of the air quality policy, what we use are the data that are the pollutant emissions that are taken from the production of energies. And then we can use this data and to look at scenarios of impact on the society and on the environment. In the field of climate risk, and here we have seen, uh, we have heard also many um, speech relating to the monitoring of disasters and emergencies. We have worked on mitigations, and par particularly we focus on infrastructure, natural resources, and people. But now we are, and, and uh, the natural hazard that uh, we forecast and we observe are the floods, droughts, uh, head waves. But now we have to look and another scenario, so we have to look for the climate change scenario, so we have to consider the vulnerability and adaptations of the populations, and not only of the uh, environment, but also for the society. For the management of land resources, uh, it's very interesting to see how we use the spatial information to look at uh, the natural vegetation, how it's changing. And for instance, in these transparencies, you can see how the, um, uh, veg the natural vegetation is converted in agriculture uh, zone every each year. And this, in this, uh, uh, this is related, is, uh, um, related to the White Nile irrigation scheme. For the monitoring of agricultural resources, uh, we can uh, follow the crop 
the crop growth, and we can model the growth, and we can uh, um, actually see during the year which kind, uh, which annual production, and forecast the productions, and we can also relate to the uh, climate scenarios. And uh, uh, in particular, for the we have uh, uh, used our expertise also for the ins insecure lands, and uh, this is applied to the sub-Saharan Africa zone, where we can actually forecast the vulnerability of the food availability and also the food price and the housing comes. The forest has also uh, monitored to, through uh, global uh, spatial information, and we collect uh, basis parameter for the forest, I mean the coverage forest, the species. We monitor the natural hazard, and mostly we monitor the fire. And the one of the new, um, uh, the new field that we are going for in the, in the related to the forest is the um, biomass and bioeconomy that uh, we can get from the forest the productions in the world. The water is another of the main issues where we use very much the um, geospatial information and uh, we sustain the managing of water demand, so availability of water and also quality of water. We have contributed to the blueprint uh, of the European Commission that has been issued last year and uh, with an hydro hydrodynamic model. and. Um, so for the improving of the availability and of the cleaning of the water. And we also consider the ocean's environment, the freshwater environment, as, as a protection and as ecosystem service. And finally, for the sustainable assessment, what our scope is that to um, co contribute to a platform for integrated sustainable assessment that is considering all the data sources from the previous issues that I mentioned, namely the forest, the soils, the land, the water, and all these should be considered in the view of the life cycle thinking and uh, in the, in the way how we want to see a circular economy and how we can go in a direction of the green economy. But now coming back more to the uh, subject that is uh, more directly linked to this conference is the um, Insp INSPIRE Directive and the support that the JRC is given to the INSPIRE Directive uh, that, is a build, that wants to build a special data infrastructure for Europe. And uh, I was in, not surprised when uh, one of the speakers of today said that the implementation of the SPIRE was considered at the national level a nightmare. Uh, also for us that we are supporting member states, we had uh, uh, a lot of work to do, but we are very glad that we are in the phase where there's been uh, the chapter of the Inspire has been approved on Amnesty by the member states before Easter, and now we are really in the implementation of the directives. So the annex one, two, and three that you can see here in these uh, in these uh, slides uh, now are under implementation and uh, they are operated by 27 member states that I hope will become 28 in July when Croatia will uh, join the Union officially. They are under 23 languages and. Uh, there are 34 data teams approved, so this is really, really shows the um, complexity of the implementation of this directive, but that I think this can be one of the steps of the uh, Europe can do for global special information, and this might be also in the framework of the UN initiative as mentioned by the last speakers before me. So Inspire is a community actually, and there is a community where uh, all member states are participating quite actively. We see that for each working group we have a consistent number of experts from each member states that are coming to support the implementation of this directive and to promote also the international standardizations. The JRC leads the development of the SPIRE for technical specification and also operates the geo portals. And uh, this is the, the geo portal is a connection to all member states. It's a cross border data discovery and where you can visualize the data and support the European policy making. 
a broader picture that I would like to see is not only the Spire, but is also really the digital agenda that Europe has as a flagship initiative for the 2020 strategy. And under this, of course, we have many more other initiatives that are related to this. And the JRC is also contributing to the global earth observation. In fact, is uh, um, the European Commission is co-chairing together the West GS and the GEOS, the Infrastructure Implementation Board, and also the Global Earth Observation System. Uh, you know better than me that is intergovernmental inter initiative. We had this morning. We have here also the Secretariat, the Director of the Secretariat of GEO, that is the group where also participate. The new direction that we have in Jersey and the European Commission now is really for going to big data and open data, as we have discussed today during this morning and during this afternoon. And this is one of the major challenges of the Union because of the multidisciplinarity and the interoperability that we have. So from this point of view, we have to consider very much the standardization and the regulations at the national levels that have to become to the union level. And uh, um, then we have to, uh, very important is the sensibilization of the citizen. And this morning we had very interesting lectures how we have to make sensible the citizen. And there are very important national initiatives uh, how, uh, for instance, to follow the aerosols measurements we have seen with the sensor, or uh, this morning we have uh, some other interesting lectures how the uh, citizen has need to be more involved in science, and they really need to become the auditors of our, of our implementation, how are the, organi the, orga the national and international organization are implementing their directives. So we need to make more critical the citizen, and I think that with the technology that we have to Day that is uh, really exponentially growing and uh, g becoming uh, more and more specialized, I think that the citizen must be more involved, they must be more informed about this, and uh, we have, in the end, the very good tools for reaching this, uh, this scope. And uh, it's clear, has been repeated uh, several times today, that innovation and growth are key priority. And I think that in this to this audience, it's very clear that the geospatial information can give is a crucial point for, um, give for growth. And we can achieve the growth uh, using this, uh, uh, the, all the data, the information. But we have to go for open data and for big data management. And the management of it this data is one of the major challenges that I see at the moment in, the, in this field. Then, uh, I would like also to uh, underline that the JRC partnered of the um, SEME SPIRE projects, and this is to transfer the um, know-how to the uh, private, uh, uh, private uh, sector, and this is a very important uh, um, fact because uh, um, the private companies need very much to be involved in this process. And I'm very glad to to uh, announce that uh in this, uh, in this forum on, on Thursday the 16th, there will be uh, an entire day dedicated to the leveraging of SEMIA strengths for INSPIRE. And uh, we can evaluate really how much benefit from the open data and INSPIRE this SEMIA can, can get. So all of you that we, are, we will be here are very much welcome to attend these events and also to, I wish to all of you to have a, a a very profitable conference. And uh, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.